Security health here in Coeur d'Alene in crisis mode tonight. A team of 20 personnel from the Defense Department is now at the hospital, helping to relieve some of the exhausted health care workers as they continue to deal with a flood of COVID patients. We are live with team coverage at Cooney Health coming up tonight at 5. Plus, what does that Idaho crisis mean for Washington? We'll hear from local and state leaders on where the state stands as hospitals continue to reach high capacity levels. In weather, we are tracking sunshine with hazy areas and some smoky areas as well, but continued very warm weather expected for Thursday. That and your weekend forecast is next. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here on Creme 2 News at 5 o'clock. I'm Whitney Ward. Tonight we begin with Mark Hanrahan, who is co-anchoring from Kootenai County. We want to talk about this crisis standards of care that they have officially transitioned into now. We also know that the U.S. government and the military has now sent in some help to assist the doctors and nurses who are there trying to care for these COVID patients. So Mark Hanrahan, thanks for being here with us. What do you know about the help that is coming to North Idaho tonight? Yeah, good evening, Whitney. First, let's address the crisis standards of care. If you're not familiar with that, during normal times, a hospital here at Kootenai Health would be expected to provide a certain level of care to their patients. What they're saying is they're so overwhelmed, their resources stretch so thin, they may not be able to provide that level of service to customers right now. That's why they declared the crisis uh, standards of care. As you mentioned, that team from the Dep Defense Department, 20 team members, personnel, now here at Kootenai Health, helping the doctors and nurses in the COVID ICU in particular. They're expected to be here for at least five weeks and they've been on the ground here at the hospital for the past few days now. Of the personnel being provided, there are 14 nurses, four doctors and two respiratory therapists. They're at Kootenai Health to support staff amid, again, this crisis standards of care. We were delighted to see that, uh, that the, the standard of care was, was exceptional for the patients admitted at this hospital. Um, despite the sort of unprecedentedly large volumes of patients currently being cared for, um, the, the staff, the nurses, the physicians have been able to rise to the challenge and, uh, and, and, and fight the good fight. Um, we're also incredibly fortunate to be able to be here and provide some, some much needed offloading of that stress on this local system. So in the past year and a half, Kootenai Health has not once shut down their COVID-19 unit. According to Kootenai Health Chief of Staff Dr. Robert Scoggins, the hospital never got to a place where they were able to discharge the final COVID patient. Kootenai Health has maintained between three to five ICU COVID patients, and today there are around 40 patients in the ICU, roughly 20 on ventilators. This is in addition to non-COVID patients who are also needed to be treated in the ICU. So having the members from the DOD here to help is relieving some stress for doctors and nurses. It's been incredible from our standpoint because of how fast they've been able to integrate into our hospital uh, and get up and running. Healthcare leaders here at Kootenai Health still concerned for what is to come because the vaccination rate remains pretty low here in Kootenai County, just about 40%. Also, they anticipate seeing more cases after Labor Day weekend and the return to school for local students here. There is no masking requirement in Coeur d'Alene schools. There's no vaccine requirement for teachers either. So that is certainly a point of concern for healthcare workers here. We want to bring in my colleague, Krem Tews, Amanda Rowley now. Uh, Kootenai Health held their own press conference today where they talked about the situation specifically with their COVID overflow unit. It's being stood up here at the Health Resources Center. Right. That now is filling up with COVID patients. It is. So we learned today there's a total of 22 beds in that overflow area. It's a conference room that they transformed into that area. And now half of those beds are being used. So this is something that's really concerning for them. I mean, they're just kind of playing it by ear, right? Now today, Kootenai out. Kootenai Health is caring for about 115 COVID patients. Now, at the beginning of August, that number was 68. They say their biggest limitation right now is the number of staff to cover the surge in COVID patients and maintain care for non-COVID patients. Now, the potential need for a field hospital depends on if the overflow beds reach max capacity. The hospital's chief regional operations officer says if it comes to that, they will be relying on additional community support. Now today, we actually had a chance to meet with a former COVID patient who was in the overflow area for the last 24 hours. He's been in the hospital for two weeks, but just this afternoon, he was discharged. I'm feeling positive about the outcomes. I feel really good about my experience. And I can't wait till the day when I can walk back in here and bring pictures of my family in a fruit basket. <laughs> 
Right, he wants to thank the folks there who took care of him so well. Uh, now, Jeremy Evans, the regional operations officer, says that the hospital um, has about 550 open positions right now. 240 of those positions are clinical caregivers that they desperately need to help with the surge of COVID patients. Now, as for COVID testing here at Kootenai Health, they say their drive-through testing is still open and operational, even though right now they're seeing an, uh, a high volume of tests, they're right. still being able to bring those results back within 48 to 24 hours. Yeah, my goodness. It's been a year and a half into this pandemic and we're talking about ramping up testing once again. It gives you an idea of the situation yeah, here in really North does. Idaho. Amanda, thank you very much. Well, speaking of numbers, let's take a look at the latest COVID numbers from the Panhandle Health District right now. They are reporting, as Amanda mentioned, 116 people are hospitalized in North Idaho with COVID. 315 new cases were also reported today. No new deaths. That's a good news reported today. Look, we understand this is a lot of information to take in in a short amount of time about the crisis standards of care, the Defense Department's team, uh, the COVID cases here in North Idaho. So for the latest on all of that, just text us the word COVID to 509-448-2000 and we'll send that information directly to your phone. Live in Coeur d'Alene tonight, I'm Mark Hanrahan. Now back to you. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And with Idaho being forced to activate crisis standards of care, it poses a lot of questions. For example, in Washington, the hospitals are filling up as well. So could patients from Idaho have to come to Washington for care, even as our hospitals are also nearing capacity? And the short answer is yes, but our state is under no obligation to take them. We have a... Um some special processes through the Washington Medical Coordination Center that does only apply to patients that reside that are in a Washington State Hospital, that we are not um, sort of guaranteeing the help, the help to anyone that's outside of Washington State. So right now, healthcare leaders are warning that Washington is also nearing a critical point. And another big question is, is it a possibility that Washington could join Idaho and also be forced to activate crisis standards of care? Leaders again say they're doing everything they can to avoid it. But if it gets to that point, they say the state is ready, though they add we all need to do our part. I, I don't know the words to be able to use to plead with people to please do the things that you can to prevent this from occurring, which is getting vaccinated and wearing masks and really simple things. And today I also had a chance to talk with the Spokane Regional Health Officer, Dr. Frank Velasquez. He said local testing is still a challenge in the Spokane area. Increased demand simply means some people are having difficulty even finding a place to get a COVID test. He also said that problem is expected to keep getting worse as long as this spike in cases continues. He also told me, though, Spokane area hospitals are working hard to try and stay ahead of the curve as much as possible so we don't have to go into crisis mode here. What kind of conversations has the health district been having with the local hospitals to prepare for even more strain on the system? Because it sounds like you do fully expect that. Is there a plan for the possibility of uh, crisis standards of care here in Spokane, like we're seeing in North Idaho now? Uh, they are managing by, um, you know, flexing staff and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are not talking about crisis standards of care in uh, this region at this point in time. But I do have to tell you that that's one of the areas that we've, we've always examined. We examine all options, but right now our healthcare par partners are managing. North Idaho Kootenai Health is a very, in a very uh, specific situation. And if you think about it, one of the advantages that we have in Spokane, which is so we are a regional referral center, and that gives us the ability to have a capacity that exceeds what you will need for a community this size. Despite that, though, COVID hospitalizations and new cases are still on the rise in Spokane County. Tonight, the health district is reporting 212 people are hospitalized. 353 new cases were also reported today, along with three new oh, deaths. All right, we just heard Tom Sherry's voice there. He's actually outside right now in our outdoor weather center. It really is a beautiful evening. We know that we have a limited number of evenings like this left here in the season. Uh, Tom, it looks gorgeous out there, though, doesn't it? It, it does. I'm, I'm talking to, uh, to Jana right now, who's over there picking fresh basil. Nice. And if you ever come into the Creme 2 front office, you'll see lovely Jana right there. And uh, it smells great when you pick it, Jana. I can smell it. Oh, that's great. What are you going to do with that? Pesto. Uh, 
And we're going to get pesto here at the station, I think. All right, let's do this. 85 degrees, that's the current temperature. Wind out of the west southwest at 21 miles per hour. I can attest that it's breezy out here right now. It did not get as windy as we had previously thought. We had that fire weather watch, uh, and that has been discontinued now. Air quality, though, you can see the haze uh, with the mountains right now. We're at 83. That still puts us in the moderate air quality range. We need to get up to 101 in order to move into the unhealthy for sensitive group. But yeah, we've got a little more haze and smoke in the air right now than we would like. Uh, look for an overnight low of 55 degrees. Tomorrow we'll see another temperature well above average at 85 degrees. Finally back to average temperatures for this time of year. By the weekend, we'll look for highs in the upper 70s on both Saturday and Sunday with partly cloudy conditions. I'll have the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, Tom, thank you so much. And still to come here on Crimson News at 5, the fight against COVID is becoming an extremely stressful situation over in Western Washington as well. We'll explain what one local hospital there is pivoting to now as COVID deaths are on the rise. And a little bit later, we're celebrating the end of our Beef Counts program with yet another food giveaway. All those details right after the break.